Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to our Thursday stream where we reach Shaggy Box and thank you Shaggy Explain for the raid with party of 10. Welcome everyone! Welcome Zaibag, Vieredin, heya 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 heya, Tohich. Alright, we finished here last time. We are talking about peace preservance. Just a quick recap. To maintain your pieces means if you go for the attack before you want to do that, you want to make sure your pieces are safe because in the example that we did not the stream last time, we had this rook being attacked by the bishop and then it was forced to move away from the main line of attack, which means we fail. So we were shown this 4-8 gold shape, which is much better because it protects our rook and keeps it mobile. And we had this example of attack where the attack is happening and the rook is not vulnerable. Then we had some continuation shown. Then we had Igakari example with exactly the same shape, saying that the rook floating up there is not the best idea. Um, and we had this exam amazing example from Fujihabu's game where um, Fuji basically saved a move by exchanging those pawns here. Opening this line, exchanging the pawns, then moving the rook to less vulnerable position. So it's like applying the same idea in the most efficient way, which was pretty beautiful. Then we had this example where Gote wants to attack, um, but they need to keep their knight protected because Sender has this counter attack. So gold is here and the rook is going to be more active thanks to that. It's gonna go here, silver is gonna go here, I've used the bishop thanks all to that preservation of the pieces on the back, preserving the knight using the gold. Thanks to that got a head counter attack. And here the most uh, amazing move we saw on the stream is this gold. Uh, instead of going toward the king, which would be normal play to keep the king solid, went to the right side um, in order to protect the rook. If the gold went left, there was a bishop drop. And we were wondering what happened after pawn drop. The gold went back. We checked the professional game actually after that. And lastly, we had the Mukaibisha example where it's a really confusing move to beginners when the gold goes left instead of right. It's a bishop exchange opening. We talked that Gote goes to silver crown. Center redrops the bishop and offers rook exchange, which is beneficial to them because of that gold. And as an effect of that, even though they have less solid castle, both of the pieces will be very active, allowing the counter attack with 8 4 pawn drop. Uh, now, there was a bishop drop that countered it, but we hit a vanguard pawn on 5-5, five, five, which was satisfactory for Sente. And here is the new, uh, the next page, I think. Any questions so far, chat? No, oh, cool. Thanks, Zyba. Um, so <clears throat> basically it is that if we have the initiative of the leadership in the attack, um, we don't care about castle being less solid. Um, it goes with the same idea that we have been uh, repeating since chapter 2 or 3, uh, the castle simplification. As long as we have the initiative on the attacking side, we can have lower defenses. It's just a rule that we know since chapter 2. And this is an example of it being effective. Yeah, so even though they have like, ooh, silver crown and everything, um, we're gonna pressure this rook so hard and then they drop the bishop, we're gonna pressure this bishop so hard that um, our king will be quite safe. And also keeping this gold on the left means they cannot drop the rooks, stuff like that. Uh, basically, it's a good balance here. 
Instead of solidness, we have the balance, right? All right, next chapter, we next uh, problem, we will have diagram 19. This is um, like a famous move. You push this pawn, pawn takes, and instead of taking it with the rook, you take it with the bishop to save a move because the bishop comes from 7-9 square. Um, it will be able to relocate by without wasting a move. So they say if you have a castle with three pieces, it is a solid one and you feel safer, but uh, it's important to preserve your big pieces, yeah? There is some secret technique of clearing that and it is to help to defend your attacking pieces by attacking pieces. I'm not sure what it means yet. Yeah, attacking pieces are protecting the attacking pieces. So before we talked about the gold, that was a defensive piece, but this time we're gonna talk about defending while attacking, yeah? So this will be our example. Uh, good example from Cars 4 for Bishop teachings. Save money by exchange pawn using Bishop since Agora player will need to move their Bishop sooner or later. Yeah, it's a good technique. So now they are talking about example in the diagram 19. We exchange the second file pawn. Um, if we were to play a normal move, here it would be to redrop the pawn to 2 3. But they move the bishop to 4 4 instead, like on this diagram. Uh, thanks to that, the movement of bishop is bigger, it has more mobility, um, and therefore it's much, much more efficient. And also the bishop went to the fourth row. So as you guys notice, it's harder to target it. So for example, if it's on 2-2, two -two, there is a 2-3 two, two, pawn drop, right? But because it escaped from that file or that row, um, it's harder for Sente to target the bishop. So yeah, it becomes safer. And also what we're targeting is the 2-6 pawn drop here. That's going to be an attacking move, a countering move, yeah? So the main point will be that, okay, so you guys understand, right? Better than dropping a pawn here, it will be to defend while counter-attacking, yeah? Kind of. And the most important point, why this bishop is safe, will be that there is the 5-4 silver to help the head. Um, and there is some kanji here. What if you like Zanti? Unfounded worry. Hmm. Okay, so the it's unfounded worry. I think what it means. Uh, but they're also saying that the silver cannot be used in the attack easily. All right, anyway, from this position, 20 position, position number 20, uh, center will try to move their silver up, and then we're going to try to break the 6 file, uh, playing 6 5 pawn, uh, starting an engagement. And as written in the caption, center won't be able to take that pawn. And the caption is here. Do you guys need me to set up the position in playgrounds again? I think so, it's, it's quite complex again, so let me do that.
Funds are exchanged. Hmm. If Yagura. King is here, pawn is here, king is in the middle. Seems correct. Do you don't see it yet? Here we go. Yep. Uh, so it's black to move because Gotte just played here. So they say if we take it with pawn, the rook will retake. You guys see it, I hope. You do see it, okay. Um, next, what we can do is simply, let's say they play a random move, yeah? Um, do something like this. And suddenly we're counter-attacking on the rook side, which is quite brilliant in my opinion. And got obviously will be much better, yeah? So this is why uh, Sente is not able to take it. We can also argue that, hey, what about if they drop a pawn, right? Instead of playing a random move. Um, what if they drop a pawn? I think the same thing is going to happen. Uh, that's because this king is much more vulnerable than this one. So I think that would be beneficial for Gotte as well. So yeah, uh, Sente cannot retake the pawn. And they're proposing that Sente instead plays the king to 6-9, trying to ignore the attack. But here Gotte uses the knight. Next, uh, we're targeting the knight jump, which is pretty powerful combined with the 6-6 pawn. If the knight jumps, the silver will have to move. And this 6-6 pawn will be attacked by three pieces, yeah? So pawn takes, would like break the whole castle. So we have to prevent that knight jump by pushing 6-6 pawn. Sorry, uh, no, that's not what I think. 4-5 four, 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 knight with 6-6 six, six pawn. So they have to push this pawn, but it's going to become the previous variation, right? And all is, because, all is possible because the bishop became way more safer than before. Yeah. Sente cannot really do anything. All the targets that he had on this file just disappeared. Uh, the current situation is that Gote has the attack using uh, Rook. Bishop, Rook, Bishop, Silver and Knight, which means their attack won't run out. Yeah, that's the proverb that we have, having four pieces in the attack, meaning the the it's not going to run out. Um, and Sente has this 2-4 Bishop, it's, which is very uh, narrow. And they managed to, they didn't manage to preserve their attacking pieces, yeah? So basically, we can translate the preservance of the pieces as allowing your opponent to have a counter-attack in a way. So here, Gotte has a beautiful counter-attack on the head of the rook, so... Here, right? Reading chat, thank you for the follow, Don Arcade. Ah, glad it helps. And the bishop defending the silver square isn't enough. And the bishop defending the silver square isn't enough. Ah, uh, the 5-7, you mean? This one? I, I wonder if I have some way of marking those. Oh, that's my signature. No, thank you. Um, the close. Mark. Markieren. If I start drawing. Nope. Oh, it's selecting text, but not the... Oh wait, it kind kind of worked actually. Let me go with that. Nope. 
Nope, that's not the marking. Nope. All right, this one, right? Yeah, so the knight, once the knight comes here to attack the silver, if the silver disappears, we're quite happy because we will have uh, material advantage. Um, and the solid castle that sent ahead will slowly start getting broken, right? We still have the pawn drop to 2-6 and they still cannot take the 6-5 pawn. They don't have any counter attack because this bishop on 4-4, four, four, it's way... No, no, not a pawn. This bishop on 4-4 four, four is way too strong, yeah? Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so please notice that the mobility of those pieces, how much different it is. This rook is better than this rook, but um, those pieces are attacking the critical spot of 6-6, six, six, and this bishop on 4-4 four, four cannot be targeted, while this bishop on 2-4 was targeted with the rook to 5 variation that we just saw. Um, so even though Sente's idea was to attack, they're being attacked. So the best offense for the best defense for Gotte turned out to be the offense of the 4-4 bishop. Yeah. Hopefully that's clear. Next we have diagram 23. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the main point is bishop safety here. Yeah, those bishops are clearly different. Clearly different, but of course, Gotte also had a pretty nice attack on the 6 5. Uh, diagram 23, we have 8 4 pawn push. It's the Furi Bisha Bishop exchange. Sente has a normal shape, so it looks like Anaguma. Uh, looks a little bit like Senichte type of situation. So Anaguma, the Anaguma's biggest weakness is that they need a way to attack, but having all the pieces concentrated on the left, it's really hard to find an attacking uh, line. So here in this position, it will be crucial for Sente to find a way to continue the game so that it doesn't end up in Sente. And that move that Fuji played uh, will be 3-4 bishop up here. Uh, at first glance, it seems like we don't know what is this is targeting exactly, but actually it's going to be the uh, maintenance theory type of move. So here we have the bishop of the 3-7. So indirectly, we're looking at the enemy's king here, right? In the future, we might have some combination attack. Combination attack usually means like taking use of this uh, six for pawn, uh, being pinned by the bishop. So maybe there will be some attack like pushing this pawn to six five, as six yeah six five type of deal. At the same time, we're protecting these this very important square. I don't know how the selection works from top to bottom. If there is, it's very weird. If it's a, if there is a kanji, it's top to bottom. If there isn't, you cannot select that square. So it's the four six square. I have to figure out the PDF. Maybe there is a way for me to draw on the screen. Uh, also, possibly finding an attack on the rook if the silver needs to move. Ah, in the previous problem, I think. Um. So yeah, that, uh, if you guys play Anaguma, that 4-6 pawn is very important because it stops the enemy rook from Sabaki, right? That's very important that you don't allow them to be exchanged. So this bishop, it's like double protecting with the silver. So I assume the silver will be free to go now. Um, and also we're... Okay, so there are three things. Looking at the king indirectly, Defending for six pawn and putting a lifeline to the rook 
um, keeping it protected, right? From here, send. Uh, we'll use the bishop to like have an offense on the goddess camp or like pressure. And the bishop will be the pivotal piece for that. And again, remember the idea that we're explaining to defend the attacking pieces using the offensive pieces, yeah? But yeah, they're saying that this kind of bishop drops in your own camp, putting a pressure on the enemy, are very important moves that you should remember if you're a static group player. Okay, we have diagram 25, which the position develops a little bit. So maybe we will input this position in the playgrounds again. Also notice the edge pawn is pushed, yeah? That's according to our relativity theory. The free free silver usually isn't good shape for Furibisha, um, but somehow it was played. And here we have the bishop drop, yeah? So it will be black to move. Everything else seems correct. Okay. So we drop the bishop. I'm always trying to find a bishop drop like that, but I don't always have one. Yeah, that's that's about also like predicting that you will have a bishop drop and making like a occasion for you to do. So in this case, you have Fuji Sensei. So it's not like he randomly has a space there for bishop. It's like he's targeting this move ahead, yeah? But now that you've seen this move, maybe in your own games, you will be able to think of something similar, right? It's a learning opportunity. And you will keep that in mind. So here, um, uh, the Gotha got played knight jump, so tar targeting the castle, uh, the silver crown, also like blocking the bishop influence a little bit, but Sente continues, making the silver crown. And then, hopefully you guys see that, yeah. Attacking on 7-5 square, uh, using the bishop influence. Uh, Zaypak, do you see how the bishop influences this position currently? What's the follow-up of the bishop? Hmm... So basically, uh huh. Oh yeah, six D exactly. Yeah, that's the point. Um, if they take, you can clearly see, yeah, the influence on this file here. Beautiful. Uh, the fun part is usually the way you would counter silver like this, like similar to rapid advancing silver, would be to push this pawn. But um, actually, we can take it. The bishop is pinning the knight, so that's the point the book is uh, showing us. And again, yeah, if we were to... There's one, one thing that we have to be careful about. Pawn takes, silver takes. Now Gotha has a chance to do something, um, which is the bishop drop to 3-9, and looks painful, but if we consider this together a little bit, uh, we're gonna see the next move. What could that be? What could be a good move for um, center here? 
And thanks God the answer is right behind the Shoggy playground so you guys don't see it. <laughs> let the rook float. So if you let the rook float, your silver is going to die. Right? Because it's a fork. So this is very unacceptable situation because you lost a whole silver for free. So you have to do something about the silver. Because dot 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 the rook is actually dot dot dot. Six F. Um there is a better move. Yes, but thinking about defending the silver is good, but there's even better move. Silver takes 60, exactly. So this is more aggressive. And look how this bishop works well. It protects the silver and also protects the rook. Isn't this amazing, guys? This is the most good feeling attack. Very good feeling. Yeah, you're, it seems like enemy tried to stop you, but you don't care because you preserved your pieces. Yeah, you made sure you're fine with this counter attack. Your attack isn't stopped at all. It's even stronger. Because they attacked a piece that didn't matter in the attack, yeah? The rook didn't matter to protect the king, actually. Second guess, all right, all right. Um, if you go there, it's gonna be a successful move to you. Sente's attack will basically be decided. It's unstoppable. And this way, uh, offense is the best defense, yeah? Or attack, no, this is not the proper thing we want to teach you. We want to teach you that offensive pieces can be used to maintain offensive pieces. Yes, yeah? so they can protect each other. So here we have bishop that does two things. Protect the rook and also is an offensive piece. So offensive piece, bishop, defending, offensive piece, rook. While attacking, yeah, six for silver. This is ideal position for us. Um... If you make situation like this, it means that your own cup will be solid and you will be able to preserve. High quality. So it's a high quality piece shape, yeah? And as a result, of course, of course, the opponent cannot allow you to have this kind of ideal position, yeah? It looks like game Ifa showed me last night, every piece coordinate together. Yes, exactly. I don't know what game he showed you, but pieces coordinated is important. Yeah. So as to complete this position, they say that the rook is protected by the bishop. Uh, so the fork that they imposed on us is no damage to us. Um, to defend your attacking pieces, to preserve your attacking pieces. Because you had preserved your attacking pieces, you were able to attack very, very strongly. Yeah. Um, I could argue that here, well, I clicked something, that here, if they take our rook, we don't have to take it immediately. We could also take the uh, gold because we have a yeah, knight protecting the bishop, actually. I would consider that, yeah. But yeah, notice, yeah, like in this position, all the pieces are protecting each other. Take If we take this, they're going to drop the rook. Maybe we drop another bishop to protect it. Okay, I guess taking is also fine, yeah. Just to conclude that. How much more do we have in the chapter? We have a few pages before, like a big diagram that we usually arrive at, and the chapter is still pretty long. So we're not going to do everything today. Uh, but let's do more. Yeah. I don't like the idea of horse getting away. Yeah, then we can retake it. Yeah. Uh, allow the rook pin. Look, sorry, rook fork, and then double the attack on the king by redropping it, maybe. Yeah. So something like. Um, Something like this. So now we're threatening the promotion here. 
and if they take give us the rook we're more than happy yeah because pff, we just get we just sabaki our rook yeah it teleported from two eight into our hand we can drop it on three one next or if they take the gold instead we just you know break through just take the gold maybe just break through um if they take the silver we attack the king while attacking the rook so if they defend here um we could actually do something about this gold yeah or something yeah it we decide what's happening in this game and therefore we will be a little bit better off. Yeah. Uh, starting from the Reiwa Jedi. Reiwa Jedi means a uh, few years ago. So like, when did Reiwa start? 2019? Three, four years ago. So it's pretty modern. In the opposing shogi meaning swinging rook versus static rook uh, the third fire rook became more and more used especially the ishida style shape um become there were many people that started playing it again in the position 27 this is one example center will okay so this is the example let's see so we do have third file versus static and in this example, we will try to get to this Ishida style by pushing this this pawn up, yeah, to seven five. Here it goes, yeah. This type of change of the shape to Ishida style was played in Showa Jidai, so it's like I don't know six years ago. Um, so yeah, it's playable, yeah? Nimo Kakaorawatsu, unrelated. Sihoka ga agatte kita ni no wa. Okay. So yeah, um, the reason why they started playing this shape, yeah, usually we would say that if you played third five rook, then it's really hard to get into Ishida style. And here they find a benefit in this shape because it goes together with our preservation theory. The Ishida shape means that your rook is in the middle of the board. It will be very mobile. Sideways. It will be easily used sideways and uh so not no. We had an example last um week or two weeks ago when we sacrificed the pawn on six five and our rook went to the side. I think they're referencing that. Um we had a very easy example to understand how powerful this rook will be sideways. All right, well, let's let's put this. So how do we get to this shape? Again, playground will help us here. I think it's correct. Tell me if it's wrong. <laughs> so the king went up, and here we gonna go. Okay, you see it. Seven five pawn. Going for silver crown. Bishop goes down. A gold goes up, of course. Going for the rook up. Six four pawn to put a pressure on this file. And before they push this, we jump the knight. Yeah, and this shape will be good. They explain it in additional diagram here. Um, the two pieces cooperate together and they're protecting each other weak points. And this is why Ishida style is very good. 
So rooks uh, weakness are the ears we call them in Japanese. Yeah, I'm not sure in Japanese or no in Japanese too. Probably Hidechi was the one to translate that terminology. But the rook weakness are the ears, and knight is the piece that exactly protects those two squares. And then um, the rook is protecting the weakness of the knight, which is the head. Right, Jinji always. Here you go. The pawn is uncourt. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, the pawn is defended by the silver. <laughs> yep, guys, uh, rook is a chinchilla confirmed. All right, but the problem is that rook being on the middle of the board usually gets very close to the enemy's um, gold and silver. And therefore it's easy to target it. So you guys probably heard of that uh, strategy called climbing gold when the gold comes here to target the rook because it cannot go back anymore. So that's what it's referencing to. Mickey Mouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ishida style. So Ishida was a famous shogi player who was blind um, and he came up with this style, Ishida style. Why the rook is up there? So. Um, Because, simply speaking, it's a very good shape. Um, we want to push the 7-5 pawn. And by putting the rook here, we're not only making it mobile, we're also protecting the 8-6 pawn, meaning the bishop is now free to go anywhere. And also, then we will be able to jump with the knight. And also, the enemy bishop is actually attacking the 6-6 file, so the rook is also helping to protect here. So you see, all the pieces cooperate together, yeah? The rook takes away the responsibility from the bishop. The knight is now able to jump because the rook is in front of it, and the knight protects the rook. Yeah? Or three or four, yeah. Then we are also able to like push the two for pawn in the future. It's like all the pieces cooperate very well together, yeah, Zaibach. So this is why it's good shape, um, Ishida style. It's pretty cool shape. Uh, whenever it's uh, in the static rook versus static rook or double swinging rook, it's always a cool shape. The only problem is, as I mentioned, that the rook is much closer to the enemy golds and silvers. So you have to make sure it won't be counterattacked. Uh, one bad example is that you have double swinging rook, and the enemy has a yagura here. <laughs> yeah, those those two generals will be like, uh, okay, uh, yagura here. Those two generals will be like one way away to threaten your rook. So yeah, rook protects this square, and this square protects the knight. Knight protects the rook. Bishop protects the knight and is able to go here or here. Somewhere along this diagonal. Silver will be able to move because the rook is protecting the pawn to 6-6. Six, six. So it's like four reasons, I think. Um, mm, so yeah. And in this diagram, the knight will be able to be used. And as you guys know, Swinging rook is usually much better if they're able to use the left side knight. So yeah, they're taking care of each other, as we talked. Tsumari, as a result, uh, we go back to the modern shogi theory, the attacking pieces defend attacking pieces, yeah? They're both attacking pieces, they defend each other. So we have to make sure that our rook is safe on this square. Um, and this example, I think what it says that 
what Anaguma would usually do is put their bishop to seven uh, four two and then play the silver to six four to attack seven five square. That's the usual way to pressure the Ishida style using the silver and the bishop. So what we did, we kind of put this silver on 6-5, which is kind of weird. But thanks to that silver, they don't have a way to pressure our rook. So it's a really hard to understand example, but again, defending the attacking pieces with attacking pieces, yeah. Uh, so only do this in rare instances where generals are not around. There are strategies where they deliberately bring their generals up and you have to be prepared for it. But yeah, um, you can move your rook to 7-6, but if you were to jump the knight behind it, you have to make sure it's safe enough. Because once you jump the knight, there is no going back, yeah? So in swinging rook games, you will see like the floating rook. But the knight jump, you have to be careful about. You have to be careful about if they play Yagura or not. If they do play Yagura, play a different file, stuff like that. You want to know more? There are core books, you know, Zaiba. Um, Ishida style is a very cool strategy that Hidechi didn't mention a lot in their video. His videos, he concentrated on the file for Rook the most. Um, and I have like a whole book about it. Like for Kubo Sensei, you know Kubo Sensei? Uh, we have Kubo Sishidaryu, for example, yeah. He's a Sabaki artist, he used to play it a lot. So if you guys interested, he could do books like this in the future. Um, and he... Yeah, so like the most basic what Hidechi covered would be this Quick Ishida. Quick Ishida. With... Uh, It looks weird in the camera when I flip it, when I look at it. Uh... Yeah, so you have static rook. I'm so confused by this diagram. <laughs> it flips on the screen. It's flipped on the screen. I'm so confused by it. Uh, basically, you have uh, rook on the third file and the bishops. Yeah, the camera is mirrored. Let me Let me try this. Does this read correctly? This reads correctly, yeah? Kubo Sishida's view. Um, so Hidechi covered... Like, there are many, many variations. Um, he probably covered this variation the most... Kyusen, yeah? Mm, mm, mm. This, 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 yeah. You guys see it? Yeah, this is the quick Ishida basic position where we're center and they're gotta, and here we have the chance to attack. So that would be like super, like a quick Ishida attack if we were to start engaging with this pawn. That's a quick Ishida. But then the king should be moved once before that. So like those details, like when do you move the king? When do you keep your bishop line open and stuff? Um, those matter a lot in the Ishida. Um. But yeah, uh, especially if you're static rook, I think Hidechi video explains how to counter, how to survive Ishida. And usually I recommend to move the king uh, as a static rook first. But that's a topic for another lesson, I guess. Mm. It's cool. It's cool. <clears throat> All right. Um... 
So here, yeah, attacking piece, attacking, uh, defending, attacking piece. Cool. As we said, they all defend each other, and now we have diagram thirty. Uh, and this is double swinging rook, yeah. The, this was third fire rook. Um, this is the opposing rook. Gotte might have went for the Ishida style, but uh, currently Sente is the one attacking, so they cannot do it. So. Again, I think he was in there. Ah, no, 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 no. They're preparing for the attack, the enemy ship, maybe. Um, so this will be the usual shape in this double swinging rook. And it's going to be very important if you guys play swinging rook. So let's do it properly again. Very, very important. Because people usually in the swinging rook, they're like, I don't know what to do. Well, I often don't know what to do either. Because it's so difficult. So we have to learn this particular shape, the swingy group players. Um, this is Mino, this is the twin gold castle on the bottom. And Sente just played the edge pound, so it's white to move. Okay, and here what they're gonna do is they're gonna Prepare a shape like this. Seven five pawn. Four four for bishop. Eight four pawn. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Throws rook. Eight seven actually. Um and then knight. So please notice, yeah, the movement of the rook, the movement of the bishop. Uh, I think I think they they put it here specifically so that you see how cramped they are, yeah. Both of the pieces are on the fourth row, meaning they're very active, and on top of that, they have silver and knight joining their attack. Next, what they're gonna do is jump the knight to two five to attack the edge. And again, we have this Ishida style where attacking pieces are preserving the attacking pieces. So please notice in your own games uh, that in different shape, the same idea will keep appearing here. Yeah? And uh, personally, a personal comment this is like the most efficient way you can build your attacking shape and this is the most training trending one the fastest way um make sure your pieces are efficient protecting each other limiting the ability of counter attack yeah putting the rook on second row is very dangerous against bishop drop yeah that's also true usually you would put it on eight six like here, in order to open this pawn, that would make more sense to me. Something like this. The problem is they can take it and like redrop it, um, and it becomes very difficult. They still have this edge attack that's very powerful. But those are two professional players playing, so um, they will know what they're doing. Yeah, Here. The meaning of this is maybe they want to keep the rook safer against some bishop drops in the future. And if we were to push this pawn and exchange the bishops, it's already defending the knight, so he can play a different move here. I assume that's the idea. Yeah. I assume that's the logic behind it. How do we improve in Shaggy? I don't know what I'm doing in the game, but now I still I don't know what why I'm doing in the game. But now I look at my old Kifuino horror. Yeah, that's how improving works, uh, CEO. You're like, oh god, I was this different person so many months ago. That means you improved. 
If I were to watch my Kifu from years ago, I would cringe. Is this Nemo theory? Uh, I don't know. All right, and here we have this big diagram. So we talked about this before that let me uh, move this a little bit. We talked about this before that the mobility theory make your pieces power up, yeah? So they become bigger. But then once you use the preservation theory, they get this superpower of a shield. Yeah. Defending your attacking pieces, keeping their good movement. Yeah? So you protect them. Power shield. Cool. Uh, Seminus, so to, in order for your attack to be successful, you cannot let your big pieces activity to disappear. Keep your big pieces active, therefore preservation theory, yeah? The opponent, of course, will know the same thing. And kanji, kanji, kanji. <laughs> All right, let's translate that. So they will uh, pester, uh, pressure your attack deadlock. They will do your best to like pressure your pieces or to seal off your attack. And for us, in order to avoid the deadlock or avoid being pressured, we need to use the preservation theory. The basics of preservation theory is to use the gold or silver's power to help the big pieces being defended. So defend the pieces that are very mobile in order to keep them being efficient. You want to keep the efficiency by defending the efficient pieces using your smaller pieces. And if you have both mobility and preserved mobility, you will be able to create a very powerful or ideal attack. Next, we have the defend, uh, preserve the attacking pieces with attacking pieces. If you do that, uh, you will be able to delete the weakness of the king, yeah? Before we said that you should use the gold uh, to defend the rook, but if you defend your attacking pieces with attacking pieces, that gold can be used to defend the king instead. So the castle weakness also disappears. In the modern shogi, um, the offense becomes the trending attack, the, the trend. So it is very important for you to know about the preservation theories because it becomes, creates easier way for you to attack. And it's very, very important idea. Yeah, get it guys. Creeper. Three points, yeah? Make your piece mobile, keep that mobility, use your generals to defend that piece to keep your mobility, but if in case you can, use other attacking pieces to help your attacking pieces instead. That's the this paragraph. Okay, sounds good. Creep. Creep. What's a creep? I think we had the same question last week. Clip hairpin. Clip. 
paper clip, surgical clip. Okay, I'm intrigued, so we, we can check what it is actually. No, I'm not making this up. This is actual translation from the G-Show. I'm just going to briefly touch this topic and we're going to finish it next week. So that we have some material for next week. Uh, not make everything today. I think it's a good idea. But we can start like learning what exactly is this clip. So we will read this page. In modern shogi, there are many uh, ideas that are echoing. Okay, uh, big sentence. Wait, Senpai Takinigyoku. All right. So there is a trend of King's Castle being less and less uh, solid. And that's because of these ideas that we talked about. They affect the way the castle is shaped. And therefore, there was it was important for us to have a different ways to keep your camp intact. And in that that moment, what's a very useful technique will be the clip, clip, the clip technique or whatever it is. Uh, clip in shogi terminology, the clip uh, didn't exist. It's something that the author of this book created. Uh, there is something, something necessary, maybe definition. For matter of convenience. All right, so it's a title that they just came up with for the matter of convenience of this book. Um, so yeah, it's not some it's not some terminology that you would normally use. It's not something that you find in Hidashi's dictionary. That's not something that people know. It's just something that's used in this book in particular. Okay, yeah, guys, this is not a real accepted terminology, but considering we create the English terminology, maybe it's gonna, yeah. Maybe we will use it. Uh, in recent years, in Aigakari, as shown in the diagram, uh, free eight silver going up, cases were raising. There are many reasons for that, but one of the reasons will be the creep. Aigakari and free eight silver, yeah. So efficiency theory means as many pieces as efficient possible, but does it also imply not letting unnecessary pieces get taken? I mean, you never should give away a free piece if you don't have to. But with the mobility theory, we said that sometimes you sacrifice the tempo or you sacrifice the pawn in order to get more mobility. And that's different from efficiency theory. That's mobility theory. All right, what, starting here, what shape is exactly the clip shape? Clip is the gold and silver, as shown on the left side, uh, in that shape. As you see on the upper part, uh, that's the definition of clip. Okay, so snow roof, gotcha. <laughs> So both uh, silver and the golds are protecting each other, right? Their connection is really good. And thanks to that, their ability to like resist or defend is very, very high. Uh, so there are different examples of clip on the left. Using many generals or using just the gold on the bottom, the gold and the silver, yeah? It is a good shape. By the way, two piece uh, gold and silver, if you put them together, uh, there's only two examples of good shape of those two pieces, as, as shown on the left. But the left shape defends nine squares 
while the right shape affects seven squares. As a result, the left shape is a little bit better. So to summarize the clip has a good connection between the pieces and on top of that their defending power is very wide so it's a very advantageous na 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 extremely defensive very advantageous extreme defensive shape you love this page yeah it's very interesting uh clip well, you know look yeah basically be aware of which one is more efficient yeah So here on the left, they protect more squares, yeah, because silver and gold, they double protect the three five and one five, but here they have more efficiency on the sides, yeah, they're more spread out. Yeah, here they're kind of one on one on the other. And then we will have some basic examples, but I think we're gonna keep it for the next week to not make it too long, because we finished a big sub chapter. Next week, hopefully, we're gonna finish the the whole clip paragraph, the whole preservation theory. And in two weeks, we're going to go to this chapter that's going to talk about positioning, battlegrounds, docker area. Interesting. That will be a very interesting chapter, it seems to me. So, so far we talked about like a wide scope, like a whole position uh, type of thing, like relativity theory, like the strategical advances yeah like the prompt efficiency theory we talked about how to defend that then we talked about how to run away from that triangle using mobility and how to preserve your pieces and then we're gonna start concentrating more and more about local position so now that we know the whole image we're gonna go a little more uh, concentrated yeah all right guys uh i'm gonna see you on Saturday stream, I believe. We will have two streams on Saturday, actually. One which is the chill stream and one which is six hours later, which will be the Lily's handicap game. Uh, if you go to the Discord, there is an event on top left. It's going to be a reminder for you. And on Sunday, we will have uh one or two streams as well with two remaining ttq winners winners uh second and third place which will be i forgot which time it will be like before our stream so i'm not sure if we're gonna skip on sunday no we shouldn't skip on sunday shaggy you guys always have the best kifu if i'm mentally able to we're gonna have two streams on sunday if not we're just gonna finish on the uh, handicap games but if you want to get notified remember to join the discord we're gonna have a link there i'm gonna ping you as well uh hopefully gonna see you there for now uh thank you for joining thank you of course for being active in the chat and bye bye